This is test one from this year, question one. In this case here, you are given some data for the degradation of phosgene gas in water. So like how it degrades in the moisture in the lungs. And you are given three different experiments, the different concentrations, and how the rate changes for each of those different initial concentrations. So the first question asks you to determine rate constant, order, and rate law. So let's start this out. What you're gonna do, you have three different setups that you can start with. We know that our rate law is gonna have some version of this equation right here. We're not including water in here because water is the solvent. So it's the medium, it's there in however much is needed at that time. So that doesn't really count in this equation. So our reactants in this case that we're only using is the phosgene. So we need to find, we have rate data and concentration data, we need to find the rate constants and then also F. So it should be the same rate constant in every case, close at least. So you can pick any one of these experiments choose from to compare. That's the only way we're going to get this x value. You have to compare one to another. And you can pick any set. So if we go rate one to rate two, your k is the same. It's not per reaction or per experiment. I'm going to write it out anyway. So this is the first one and that's the second one. So at this we can cancel out our k's. We should be the same. So knowing those numbers that you have, you can pick any two in your table, as long as you make sure that this rate corresponds to that concentration, and you should end up with an X value of one, telling us that this is a first order reaction. Then you have to go about and find K. Now to find K, use this exact same equation here, but now we know X. So K is gonna be equal to the rate over concentration of phosgene. Now you have three different possibilities to choose from in the table. You can use experiment one, two, or three. You do all three and get the average. That would be the most ideal situation. I'm just gonna do one. And when you do that, you're gonna end up with, I think I took the data from the first one. Yeah, the data from the first one, you end up with a value of, sorry, 7.21. And that's seconds to the minus one. So make sure you have your units in there when you are writing this out. There's our rate constant. We know it's first order. So to write out the rate law in full, going by this right here and inserting our rate constant, 7.21 seconds to the minus one. There is our rate law equation. Now we can move on to part B. Part B asks if a soldier gets a certain amount, certain concentration on the lungs, how much is going to react after 0.5 seconds? So you are told that that initial concentration of phosgene is 0 0.001 molar and you're given a time of 0.5 seconds. Just get an idea of how fast this goes. You know this is first order. So you can use our integrated rate equation. A equals A naught minus KT, where A is the concentration remaining in a reaction after a certain amount of time. A naught is the initial concentration, T is your time, and there's your rate constant. So we can substitute in here, you know, E naught, 0 0.001 molar. And just make sure your working units work out out here. So if you take 7.21 seconds to the minus one, five seconds, you're gonna end up with a value here of 2.72 times 10 to the minus five molar. Now this is not your final answer. Okay, this is how much is remaining after 0.5 seconds. The question wants to know how much has reacted after 0.5 seconds. So that means you're going to have to get E naught minus A to figure out how much is going, how much is reacted. So that value there should be 9.78 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. Now keep in mind these values are going to change a little bit depending on what experiment set you used to find K. 
Now the last part of this question is a bonus part. The question wants to know what the pH is at this time. Asking, yeah, after 0.5 seconds. So looking at your equation up here, and if you remember your equation for pH, and that's log, negative log of the concentration of H plus or H3O plus is what it really should be. Now you know this concentration here that is remaining, and you know its relationship to that one over there. So um, this how much has reacted? Yeah, how much was the pH of the lung tissue in their lungs at that time? So you're going to use our amount that we found, the amount that has reacted, because that's how much we're going to get for our H plus. Um, so 9.78 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. And then you're using your stoichiometric ratio here. So you know that for every one phosgene, because this is phosgene, you make two H plus. So you actually have 1.946-ish times 10 to the minus 3 molar H plus, which gives you a pH of 2.71.